1,500 tons of stone. Balanced like a house of cards on Salisbury Plain in southern England, its purpose has puzzled archaeologists for centuries. Some say it's a site of sacrifice. Others, a gateway to the afterlife. But everyone agrees, Stonehenge is an engineering marvel. It was made up of almost 84 giant sarsen stones, towering over 80 smaller blue stones. Dragging and raising these massive sarsen stones from local quarries was an extraordinary achievement. But a geological discovery around 100 years ago reveals the bluestones journey to be just as remarkable. We know the bluestones came from Wales um, because they've got this really distinctive geology. There is one place in the UK where these particular stones are found. 200 miles away in Presley, Wales. I mean, the obvious question is, given that when we look around, we've got huge stones which are relatively local, it is why they went to the trouble of going so far to get these much smaller ones. The mystery is, how were the stones moved here? Hauling these two-ton stones over land seems impossible, especially without wheels. There's an alternative possibility, transporting the stones by sea. But how do you prove this? We, we have no archaeological evidence of the kind of uh, craft that people were traveling in in the late Neolithic. No boat has been found from the time of Stonehenge that could have carried two-ton stones from Wales to the monument. But a series of archaeological discoveries offers a tantalizing clue. Three of the oldest seaworthy vessels ever found in Europe. They date to the Bronze Age, just 800 years after Stonehenge. Experts believe their sophisticated designs would have taken centuries to perfect. So is it possible that a crude version of these boats existed at the time Stonehenge was built? They would have sewn plank boats, uh, simpler, shorter, maybe not as wide, but still perfectly capable of, of uh, transporting a blue stone from Wales to Stonehenge. 